Hello and welcome to Lovely English Stories. This story is written for intermediate English learners. Ready? Let's get started. B1, B2 English Story Do Yourself Proud Paul had lost his job and was down in the dumps. He had worked at the same company since leaving school. He was a technician at a factory and he worked on very specialist machinery. He knew he would struggle to get a job doing the same thing somewhere else because he only knew how to use certain machines. Paul and his colleagues who he had worked with for over 15 years were all officially redundant. What an awful way to phrase it, to be redundant, to be no longer wanted or needed. Paul felt truly worthless. Now what was he meant to do? Luckily, he did get some redundancy money from the company when his contract ended, but it would only be enough to cover between six to nine months of bills and mortgage payments. He had to get thinking fast about what he could do next. He realised that he could think of this in one of two ways. It could be a depressing time where he had lost his main source of income, or he could see it as a time to change the path of his life and for him to experiment and try something new. He decided to go for the latter. He spoke to some friends and his family about his options. He felt a little overwhelmed so he decided to book an appointment with an advisor at the local job centre. In the run-up to the meeting, he worked on his CV and tried to think of all the things he was good at. He found it difficult because all he could think was that he was a machine technician and nothing else. When he arrived at the job centre, he was greeted by a friendly lady called Sue. She explained to him how the appointment would work and what she could do to help him secure a new job. They talked about his skills and his qualifications. Paul had done very well at school and outside of his job, he attended a Spanish language class. He decided to learn the language because he loved to go on holiday there every year. He felt it would be more polite if he could speak to the locals in their native tongue. He wasn't fluent yet, but he was getting better. Other than that, Paul enjoyed cycling and playing football in a local five-a-side team. He was also the treasurer of the football team and he looked after their social media channels. Paul didn't think any of that was relevant and wondered why Sue kept asking about what he did outside of his job. But. How will that help me? I just do all that for fun. Sue made a note of all the activities Paul took part in. You might think that, Paul, but the reality is you have a lot of transferable skills. You spend a lot of your time trying to educate yourself as well as managing the money and marketing of a football team. That's a lot of skills you can talk about when you apply for a job. At the end of the session, Paul realised he had a lot he needed to think about. 
Sue had given him some tasks to complete before their next session. He had to complete an online career questionnaire, as well as find five jobs he'd love to do. When finding the jobs, he didn't have to consider pay or qualifications. All he had to look at was whether he would enjoy the job or not. Paul went along with it. He completed the online questionnaire and he found five jobs. He loved to fly, so he chose a job as a pilot. He also loved food, so he chose a job as an Italian chef. He liked working with people and he loved sport, so he found a job at the local Premier League football club in the admin team. He also found a job working as an assistant in the local comprehensive school's sports department. Finally, he found a job as a machine technician in a company about 30 miles away from his home. He only chose the machinery job because he knew it was something he could do. It wasn't necessarily something he wanted to do anymore. The following week, Paul met with Sue again. First, she asked how his week had been and how he found the tasks she had set him. He explained that he was surprised that he found it inspiring. He thought it would be pointless and boring. After all, what else could he do except fix machinery? Sue didn't want to give Paul the results from the careers questionnaire until he explained why he chose the five jobs. Paul laid the printouts of the jobs on the table. OK, he said, I'll start with the one I want the least. He explained to Sue that he printed out the machine technician job purely because he knew he had the skills they were looking for. But are you interested in this role, Paul? He thought for a moment or two. No, Sue, I'm not at all. I've done it for 15 years. I need a change. Sue put the printout to one side. OK, then tell me the job you'd like the most. Paul looked through the jobs again, but he knew, deep down, which one he wanted. It's this one, Sue. He handed her the printout. Tell me why you're drawn to this job. Paul laughed. <laughs> I think I'm living in a dream world. They're the football team I support. I've loved them since I was a lad. And the job sounds like just the sort of stuff I do at the five aside. The only problem is I don't have any fancy qualifications. So I doubt they'd take someone like me. They probably want someone straight out of university who's all up to date and knows everything. Sue read the job details. It doesn't say anywhere here that they want a graduate, nor does it say any specific qualifications. From what you told me you do as a treasurer and marketing manager at your club, I think this job would be ideal. It isn't the best pay, though. Would that be OK for you? Paul shrugged his shoulders. Money isn't everything. I'd rather be happy. And with that job, I could still afford all my bills and a holiday or two a year. So I don't see why not. Sue told Paul that the questionnaire results tallied with the job at the football club. It suggested he would work well in a team and in marketing or administrative sectors. 
Sue and Paul spent the rest of the session going through the job details and updating Paul's CV and cover letter. He was so thankful to Sue. She made him realise that anything was possible if he put his mind to it. He really did have the skills and experience for the job. Of course, there was nothing wrong with Paul's old job, but he really did need a change of scenery, and the job at the football club could be the change he needed. At the end of the session, Sue went over a few additional details that Paul would need to add to his CV, and then he was good to go. That night, he spent a few hours double-checking all the details before he clicked send on the email that could change his life. For five days, he didn't hear a thing. He constantly refreshed his emails and checked his phone, and nothing came through. He was about to give up when, on a run through the woods, his music was interrupted by a phone call. Hello? Oh, he said through deep breaths. Hi, is that Paul? came the voice from the other end of the phone. Oh, yes, that's me. Oh. Hi, Paul. My name is Christine. You recently applied for a job as a marketing assistant at the football club. Paul sat down on a nearby tree branch. Yeah, yeah, I did. Sorry, Christine, I'm just a bit out of breath. You called me when I was in the middle of a run. Christine laughed and then explained that Paul was invited for an interview the next day. We know it's a bit short notice but we liked your letter so much that we wanted to get you in to interview you before another company do. Paul couldn't believe it. Surely his CV and cover letter weren't that good. That night, he gave Sue, his career advisor, a call. She coached him on some of the questions they might ask and they practised answers to the questions. Paul didn't know what he'd do without her. That night, he had a shave, picked out his favourite suit, and had an early night. He wanted to be fresh and early for the interview in the morning. Bright and early at 6am, Paul's alarm went off. He jumped out of bed, did some stretching to calm himself down, had a shower, made himself some breakfast and headed out of the door. He arrived at the football ground with half an hour to spare. He spent the time recalling happy memories of watching the team play with his dad his dad would be so happy if he managed to get the job. At ten to nine, Paul headed to the reception desk, where he was greeted by a young man called Kyle. He made him a drink and took him through to the interview room. It was all very swish. Paul's old job certainly wasn't like this. Sitting in the quiet room started to make Paul feel nervous, but he tried his best to recall everything Sue had told him. Before he knew it, the interview panel had entered the room. They were Christine from the telephone call, Jerome, who was in the marketing team, and Emily, who was the marketing manager. They talked about Paul's aspirations, his old job, his Spanish speaking skills and his love of the football club. After about 15 minutes, Jerome and Emily asked Paul about his volunteering at the local five-a-side team. 
We know your work with them, Paul. We have to be honest. We follow your team on Instagram because your posts are always so funny and engaging. When we saw you'd applied for this job, we put two and two together and realised it was you who looks after that account. Paul was gobsmacked. Oh, wow. I knew we had a lot of followers, but I didn't realise anyone from the club here was one of them. They discussed Paul's social media strategy skills and how he deals with problems. At the end of the interview, he shook all their hands and wished them well. Now he had to play the waiting game, which he wasn't very good at. Even though he only went for a run the day before, Paul decided to change into his exercise clothes and go for a jog around the local lake. He needed to run off all the adrenaline he had pumping through his body. If he didn't get the job, it wouldn't be the end of the world. But if he did get the job, it would mean he could save the rest of his redundancy money for something special and he could start a new career. Paul hadn't told anyone about the job. He didn't want to jinx it. But mainly, he didn't want people to think he was being silly and applying for jobs he'd never get. Paul's run around the lake was just what he needed. He loved to be out in the countryside, listening to his music and enjoying the views. He ran for about 10 kilometres before he decided to head home. On his drive back, he noticed he had received an Instagram DM. When he got home, he checked the message and it was from Emily who had interviewed him that morning. The message read, Hi Paul, sorry to message on here, but we've tried to call you a few times and it keeps going through to voicemail. Please, can you give us a call back ASAP? Cheers! One of the reasons Paul loved running around the nearby lake was that he didn't have phone signal there, so he could run without anyone bothering him. He didn't think the job would call him so soon, or he wouldn't have gone for his run there. When Paul got home, he paced his hallway. He knew he should call back, but he was too afraid of what they might say. So, instead, he called Sue. She put his mind at ease and gave him some pointers of what questions to ask, depending on if he did or didn't get offered the job. Finally, Paul sat on his sofa took a deep breath and called Emily back. Paul, finally! Let me put you on loudspeaker. Paul, we've got a question we'd like to ask you. Ready? Paul was confused. Then he heard the voices of the people who had interviewed him. Will you come and work with us? They all bellowed down the phone. Paul burst out laughing. What a way to be offered a job. The team seemed like such a friendly bunch. He took Sue's advice and asked questions about working conditions, pay and flexible working. He was overjoyed that he could now start on a new career path and have the opportunity to work his way up the career ladder. As he hung up the phone, he knew he should call his dad to tell him the news, but first he called Sue. 
He was so thankful to Sue for all she had done. Without her, he would probably still be laid in his bed feeling sorry for himself. But thanks to her, he now had a new career ahead of him working for a football club he had loved since he was a child. Sue was so happy to hear the news. Well, what did I say, Paul? Anything is possible if you just put yourself out there and try. Now go and do yourself proud. Sue helped Paul achieve great things. Let's give a shout out to all the lovely, helpful people across the world. Tell us in the comments below someone who has helped you achieve things in your life. We hope you enjoyed this lovely English story. Thank you for stopping by. Don't forget to like, subscribe and share.